Hey everyone, uh, last lesson we talked about solving quadratics by factoring. And we also related it to the idea of finding x-intercepts, okay? So this lesson we're gonna expand on that idea, but I'm gonna introduce a different method to solve quadratics. You might actually find this method a little bit more direct, a little bit easier, but unfortunately it only works for certain cases, okay? So before we get into actually solving with square roots, let's go ahead and do a practice problem. Uh, with what we did in the last lesson, and that is exactly what you see here. What are the x-intercepts of the parabola y equals x squared minus 9? So let's say, uh, let's see, let's start with y equals x squared minus 9, and we're looking for the x-intercepts. So remember, the x-intercepts are when y equals 0. So we set y equal to 0, and then we can solve this equation now. Now, last time we talked about solving this equation by factoring. And so we do our quadratic factoring. And here you would recognize that the a value is 1. So let me rewrite this. It's actually uh, 1x squared plus 0x minus 9. If we're going to expand it all out and put it in standard form, um, that might make it easier to see. So 1 times negative 9 goes on top. 0 goes, goes on bottom. And so the only two numbers that work that add up to zero and multiply to negative nine will be positive and negative three. And so when we go to uh, write this out, expand it all out, we get one uh, x squared plus three x minus three x minus nine. And then we group. So the GCF there is x. The leftover is x plus three. The GCF here, because the negative is there, we're going to take out a negative and three. And leftover will be x plus three. And so as a result, we can see that our factors are going to be x minus 3 times x plus 3. From here, we apply the zero product property. So remember, when you multiply two things together and you get zero, that means one of those things must be zero. So we'd say x minus 3 equals zero or x plus 3 equals zero. And then we solve each one of these. So in the first case, we're going to add 3 to both sides. And so you end up with x equals 3. In the second case, we're going to subtract 3 from both sides, and we end up with x equals negative 3. So these are the solutions to this equation. The question, though, was what are the x-intercepts? So remember, the x-intercepts are written as a coordinate. It would be 3, 0, because remember, the y value was 0 when we went to solve this right here, y equals 0. Or, or and in this case, negative 3, 0. So those are our x-intercepts according to an analytical method. We found our x-intercepts, 3, 0 and negative 3, 0. So if I was to go ahead and graph this parabola, we would know that we would go to the right 3 and put a point for our one x-intercept. And we go to the left 3 and put a point for another x, another x-intercept. Now, the other thing that we know is that since the c value is negative 9, that the y-intercept is going to be 0, comma, negative 9. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And you should be able to see this. This is an interesting point, and it's, it's true in very special cases. You should recognize that this point is going to be our vertex because it, the, or sorry, the, yeah, the vertex because the axis of symmetry has to lie exactly in the middle of all the reflected points. Since this guy was three units to the left of zero and this guy was three units to the right of zero, that means our axis of symmetry is the y-axis in this particular case. We could find it. We could do the negative b over 2a. Well, negative b would be negative zero over two times one. So zero over two, or yeah, zero over two is zero. So the axis of symmetry is zero. That's exactly what we have here. Then um, plug it in to find the y-intercept or the, uh, the vertex and that's fine, but we end up with zero, negative nine. From here, we'd follow our slope pattern, uh, one, up 1 over 1, up 4 over 2, and then up 9 over 3 ends us up on the x-axis. So we have our x-intercepts here. Reflect it to the other side, and we end up with our parabola. Oops. <laughs> if I could draw a neat enough parabola, we'd be okay. All right. So that is, that's one method. This is by factoring. We solve this by factoring. I'm going to put a little note here. We solve this by factoring. What we're going to do today is learn how to solve it by square roots. And so uh, let's go ahead and rewrite the problem. y equals x squared minus 9. 
We want the x-intercept, so we're going to set y equal to 0 again. Now the key to this, the key to this method is knowing or recognizing that I only have uh, one type of variable, x squared. I don't have an x in there. Um, if it was 3x squared plus 5x plus 4, or something along that line, you couldn't use this method because you have an x squared and an x. But in this case, we only have an x squared, so we can actually approach this like we would in our Math 1 or Algebra 1 class by just isolating x. So how do we isolate x? Well, we add 9 to both sides. We want to get x by itself. So we end up with 9 equals x squared. And then how do I solve for x? Well, I have to get rid of the square. How do I get rid of the square? I do the opposite of squaring, which is square rooting. Those are inverse operations. So the square root of x squared is just x. And if you need to see that off to the side, I'll show you here. Uh, remember, x squared is just x times x. And so if we're going to circle a pair, one of those x's goes out. And so we, we're left with x. Now we can do the same thing on the other side, but we should know the square root of 9 is 3. But remember, we haven't talked about this in a little while. When I take the square root of a number, when I'm taking the square root of number, I end up with two answers. I end up with either plus or minus 3 because positive 3 squared is 9 and negative 3 squared is also 9. So we end up with two solutions. So I write it like this as plus or minus, but I should also write it like this, x equals 3 or x equals negative 3. And you should see now that this, the results are exactly the same as what I did by factoring. Um, writing as x-intercepts, they're 3 comma 0 and negative 3 comma 0. Okay, so the results are the same, but look at the amount of work that we had to do for factoring. We had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lines before we got to an answer for x, and that's not including the big x that we had to do and the heavier thinking. Whereas here, we only had one, two, three lines, essentially, to get to our x values. So this method is much more efficient, but it only works when we have one type a variable, either just x or just x squared, okay? Now, what do we see? What, what's one more thing we see? We see that we actually end up with two real x-intercepts, okay? And we haven't dealt with anything other than that really um, before, but let me just give you an example of what I mean by something else. This has two real solutions or two real x-intercepts, okay? If it only had one x-intercept, that means maybe this is the x-intercept. That means the vertex would have to be that point. It just barely skims off the x-axis. This is one real solution or one real x-intercept, okay? And then the other option is if we had zero x-intercepts. You can see that in this graph. We don't have any x-intercepts here. This graph never crosses the x-axis. So we would say we have zero real solutions, okay, or zero real x-intercepts, but we'd also say that we have two imaginary solutions, okay, or x-intercepts. We're going to get more into that in a minute. You're going to see how we get two imaginary solutions. You guys are familiar with the idea of an imaginary number and getting, um, getting values that have i in it. And so we're going to see how that applies today, okay? All right, with that said, let's go ahead and go on to the next slide here. Uh, actually, before we do that, make sure you write this down. If there is only one type of term in an equation, so if it's just x or if it's just x squared, then you're going to approach the problem directly. In other words, you're going to approach it by using the square root method, and that is exactly what we talked about right here, okay? So that's basically... Um, the, the whole intent of this lesson. So with that, I want you to do some practice problems here to make sure you have a good understanding of how to actually do it. These are all various different types of ways to use the square root method. So go ahead and pause the video and do this on your own for now, and then come back and push play to see how you did. All right, for number one, we have x squared minus 25 equals zero. Now this isn't this isn't a parabola, it's just an equation because there's no y and we're not replacing y with zero. But the work is going to be very similar to that because uh, we have an x squared. So we can solve this directly because there is only an x squared. So I can add 25 to both sides 
And so I end up with x squared equals 25. And then we're going to square root both sides to get x by itself. The square rooting and the squaring cancel each other out, so we're left with x. And then the square root of 25 is going to be plus or minus 5. We would write that as x equals negative 5 or x equals 5. Those are my solutions. Now, this is just what are the solutions. We're solving this. So we just have an x value here. We don't have a coordinate because I was not asking for something on a graph. I wasn't asking for the x-intercept, so we're just going to leave it as a solution. Okay. For number two, we have 3x squared equals 54. Well, to get x by itself, I have to get rid of the squared, and I have to get rid of the, the 3. Those are the two things I have to get rid of. Remember, when you're solving equations, the way you solve equations is you work the order of operations backwards. Normally, when we're trying to simplify an expression, we do parentheses, exponents, multiply, divide, add, subtract, in that order. Um, but when we're solving an equation, we work backwards. So the first thing we want to do is get rid of this multiplication because that comes after the exponent. So how do I get rid of multiplication? Well, I divide by that value. So when I divide both sides by 3, I end up with x squared equals, oh, what is that? That's going to be 18, I believe. x squared equals 18. Uh, 36, 40, yeah, that's correct. And then to get rid of the squared, we're going to square root both sides. And so we end up with x equals, now here's a concern here. We do end up with plus or minus something. That's great, just like we got plus or minus 5 here. But notice that we don't know the square root of 18 exactly. Right? It's not a nice, clean, perfect square. It's a number that we can simplify. So if I want to put it in simplest radical form, what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand this to say 2 times 3 times 3. I'm going to prime factor it. I'm going to circle those pairs. And then one of those is going to go out and the other one's going to disappear. So we're left with 3 rad 2. And we want to put plus or minus out front. So our final answer here is going to be x equals negative 3 rad 2 or positive 3 rad 2. Okay, so this is our answer in radical form, radical form. Now, I don't know if that helps us in real life. Usually what helps us in real life is um, finding the decimal value of that, uh, the square root of 2. And so if I want the decimal value, if I want the decimal value, this is where your calculator is going to come in handy. If I want the decimal value, I just need to type in the square root of 2, the square root of 2. And then once you have that answer, you're going to multiply it by 3 or negative 3, okay? And if I can get a calculator here, I can show you what that looks like. Let's see here. One of my old school calculators. So the first thing I'm going to do, hopefully we can see that without a glare. I want to type in the square root, the negative 3 square root of 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in uh, square root. So you can see the square root button. I know it's kind of hard to see here, but we can see the square root button there. It's a little blue button above that button. So I'm going to hit second to bring up the blue buttons. Okay, and when I hit second, you see this, this little thing that says second right here. That means you're in the blue buttons. And then you're going to hit square root, and then we'll hit two, and then we'll close the parenthesis and hit enter. So we have 1.414. Then we need to take that and multiply it by the three here. So we're going to multiply it by three. And we end up with 4.2426, and we can round it. Now, there was a negative out front here, so my answer is going to be x equals negative uh, 4.243 if I round that to the nearest thousandth, okay? And then the other one was 3 square root of 2, so that's just going to be the positive value of that. So x equals positive 4.243. So this is the decimal version of that answer, okay? Now, you can see in both these cases, both number 1 and number 2, that our answers were real solutions. They were not imaginary. They didn't have the square root of a negative number. They had real values. Same thing here. Yes, there was a negative out front, but there isn't a negative inside. So this is two real solutions, okay? For number three, we have x squared plus seven equals two. Well, again, we can solve this directly because we only have an x squared and not another x. So to get rid of the, or to get the x by itself, I need to subtract 7 from both sides. And so I'm left with x squared equals, uh-oh, negative 5. Negative 5. So now I'm going to square root both sides. And now uh, I end up with x equals 
the square root of negative five, that's an imaginary number. So remember, we're gonna put plus or minus out front because the square root of any number, we put plus or minus. And then we're gonna prism break this. So we're gonna put negative one times five on the inside. And then remember the square root of negative one is i, so we can rewrite this as plus or minus i square root of five. Or we would write it as x equals negative i radical five, or x equals positive i radical five. So that is our simplest radical form. Now, because this is an imaginary solution, because there's i's here, we're not gonna convert it to decimal values. There's no real point to do that at all if we have imaginary solutions. This would be an example, if this was a parabola, this would be one of those parabolas where it would open up, that opens up because the a value is positive, but it doesn't have any x-intercepts or real x-intercepts. So we would say, if we're gonna answer that type of question, we would say we have two, uh, sorry, two imaginary solutions. Or you could also say two complex solutions, okay? Because they are not real, all right? We would say we have zero real solutions. All right, so that is number three. Let me go ahead and double check my work to make sure these answers make sense. Plus or minus five, three radical two and negative three radical two, or in decimal form, negative 4.243 and 4.243. And the last one was I radical five or negative I radical five. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at another problem that's probably a little bit more complex, um, only because we're adding multiple steps here so we can see what it looks like. Um, we have 9m squared minus 120 equals zero. Now I could try to solve this by factoring, but that's not gonna be the easiest way, or the simplest way, because we only have an m squared. So we don't have to factor. We can just use the direct method of solving by square roots. So I need to get rid of the nine, I need to get rid of the squared, and I need to get rid of this 120. Remember, order of operations, PEMDAS, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. We work backwards with solutions when we're solving. So the nine is being multiplied, so that's here. The two is the exponent, so that's up here. The 120 is being subtracted, so that's down here. That's gonna be the first thing we do. So we're gonna go ahead and add 120 to both sides. So we end up with nine M squared equals 120. Now the next thing we need to do is get rid of that nine, so we're gonna divide by nine, okay? Now this is where it gets interesting. We get m squared. On this side, this doesn't go in evenly. So what we need to do is find uh, common factors and reduce this. So what's a common factor of 120 and nine? Well, I can divide both of those by three if I wanted to. 120 divided by three is 40, and 90 divi or nine divided by three is three. And that's as simple as that can get. And then we need to get rid of this square. So we're gonna get rid of the square, root, the square by square rooting. And so we would write this as m equals plus or minus uh, the square root of 40 over three. That's fine. But this is also the same as saying m equals plus or minus the square root of 40 over the square root of three. Okay, now because we write it like this, we can recognize that there's a problem. We do not want a radical in the denominator. So we go, gotta go back to our prior lessons and remember, to get rid of that radical in the denominator, we have to rationalize. We're gonna multiply by rad three over rad three um, for that fraction. And so we end up with plus or minus the square root of 120 divided by, well, the square root of three times the square root of three, remember, is just three. And then from here, we can simplify that radical by doing our prime factors. So that would be, let's see, two times 60, two times 30, two times 15, three times five. So those are our prime factors here, 10, 20, 40, that's correct. And we're gonna circle our pairs. We got a pair of twos. And so our answer is gonna be m equals plus or minus, plus or minus two radical 30 over three. Okay, and then we would write that as m equals negative two rad 30 over three, or m equals positive two rad 30 over three. 
So that is our solution in simplest radical form. Simplest radical form. Okay. Now, if I'm going to find the decimal value of that, decimal value, then I just need to type that in my calculator. So we want to type in negative 2 rad 30 over 3. So the first thing I'm going to do is hit second radical 30 and get that number. That's 5.477. And then we're going to multiply it by the negative 2, so times negative 2. And then we're going to divide it by the 3, because that's what a fraction means, divided by 3. So we end up with m equals negative 3.655 when, oh sorry, 65, wow, 651. Okay, negative 3.651. Now this other one, the only difference is that the negative isn't there. So our answer here is going to be 3.651. So that is our decimal version of that problem. All right, let's go ahead and make sure that I am correct with this. Dividing by 9. I'm going to square root both sides. We end up with that. We rationalize. And we got rad 120 over 3, and that can be simplified to 2 rad 30 over 3. And again, I, would, I want you to write it like this, negative, positive, two separate answers. Don't put the plus or minus as a final answer. Okay. All right, here's your problem. You go ahead and practice this one. And then when you're done, come back and uh, push play on the video and compare how you did. For this practice problem, we have 8r squared minus 95 equals negative 5. We want to get r by itself, so we're going to add 95 to both sides. And so we end up with 8r squared equals 90. And then we're going to divide by 8 on both sides. And so we end up with r squared equals 90 over 8. That's fine. You could write it like that. And uh, I guess, let me go back to the previous problem real fast. You'll notice a slight difference in how I solved it in the lesson. In the lesson, I reduced the 120 over 9 to 40 over 3 before I took the square root. That might be a good idea, okay? Um, but in this, I didn't reduce that first. Actually, I did. Never mind. I did reduce that first. You could have not reduced it and then taken the square root and then gone from there. But uh, either way will work. All right, so for this one, the 90 over 8, I can reduce that by 2 on both of those. So I'm left with r squared equals 45 over 4. That's as simple as that gets. We'll square root both sides. And so we would write this as r equals plus or minus the square root of 45 over the square root of 4. Now, for us, this is good. We don't have to rationalize the bottom because we know the square root of 4. It's a nice, clean, whole number. So it's a perfect square. We get square root of 45 over 2. And then remember the square root of 45, that factors to 3 times 3 times 5. We can circle the pairs and we're left with 3 radical 5. So our answer is going to be r equals plus or minus 3 radical 5 over 2. And then we'll break that apart into two answers. Negative 3 radical 5 over 2 and positive 3 radical 5 over 2. So that is the simplest radical form. And if I'm going to put that into decimal form, where's my calculator at? We're going to type in the square root of 5, enter. Then we're going to multiply it by the negative 3, enter. And then we're going to divide it by the 2. So we end up with r equals negative 3.354. And because that's the exact opposite, just the sign's different, we're going to get 3.354. Okay, so those are our solutions as decimals. Now, in this case, these are both real solutions. There's two real solutions here because there's no i's, okay? All right. Um, just making sure I'm right here. Looks good. So let's do two more problems, and then we're going to be done, okay? These are slightly different. They're a little bit unique, but we can still use the square root method on this. We have x minus 5 squared equals 121. So if we're thinking of our order of operations, parentheses, exponents, multiply, divide, oops, divide, add, subtract, well, parentheses would be the last thing that I'm going to try and fix. So I don't want to deal with anything on the inside of the parentheses. I want to deal with that squared. So how do I get rid of that squared? Well, I square root both sides. 
We can't do that on, we couldn't do that on the other problems, but in this case, because we have a parenthesis around everything, we can get rid of that squared early. So the square root of x minus five squared, well, the squared and the square root cancel out, so you're left with x minus five. And then the square root of 121 is plus or minus 11, okay? 11 times 11 is 121. Now, right here, I'm gonna write it as two separate equations now. The one is negative 11, and the other one, x minus five, is positive 11. The reason I wanna do that is because you're gonna, you're gonna see that there are two separate answers to this problem. So here we're gonna add five to both sides. And so we end up with x equals negative six. And then on the other one, we're gonna add five to both sides. But this time, we end up with x equals 16. So we end up with two different solutions, not just opposite signs, but different numbers altogether because we got rid of the squared early because of the parentheses, okay? Again, these are two real solutions. All right, for the last problem here, we have x minus six squared equals two. Well, we don't wanna deal with the parentheses first, we wanna deal with the exponents, so we're gonna square root both sides. Well, I don't know the square root of two, so we'll leave it like that. Can we prison break that? Can we simplify that? No, we can't. So we just get uh, plus or minus the square root of two, that's already prime. So from here, we're gonna, we're gonna break it into the two equations. We get x minus six equals negative rad two, and x minus six equals positive rad two. Then we will add six to both sides. Now notice we can't combine these, these are not like terms. So we would write it as x equals, and we always put the real number first, positive six minus radical two. And for the, the next one, we're gonna add six to both sides. And so we end up with x equals positive six plus rad two. So this is the simplest radical form here, simplest radical form. If I want the decimal version, this one's gonna look a little bit different, so you need to be careful on this. We're gonna type in the second square root of two and hit enter. Here we have 1.414 for the two. This equation, this expression says six minus that. So what I wanna do is I wanna write this number down, six minus 1.414. Well, over here, if I plug in the square root of two, it becomes x equals six plus 1.414. The solutions are not gonna be the same number with different signs, they're gonna be two different numbers. So for this problem, I'm gonna type in my calculator, six minus, 1.414 and then hit enter. So we're left with 4.586. And on this other one, we wanna type in six plus 1.414 and we end up with x equals 7.414. So those are our two solutions in decimal form. All right, so let's double check our work, make sure we're good here, 16, negative six, that's good. And we end up with six plus rad two and six minus rad two, or in decimal form, those guys, okay? So that wraps up this lesson. If you have any questions, please comment below or find me in tutoring, and I'd be glad to answer that. Otherwise, have a great evening, and I'll see you next time.